Greetings, True Lighters. Greetings, True Light Nation. Welcome to Embrace the Future, the online worship experience of the True Light Baptist Church. I'm so delighted that you decided to join us to be a part of our ministry on today. Your presence and participation, your patience and prayers mean so much to us today. As this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited on this beautiful spring-like day. It is not the spring, but it is spring-like and is much enjoyable. I want to encourage you to enjoy your day, but as well, I want you to also be ever mindful of the CDC requirement in terms of we're still in a pandemic period. So be safe as well as be sound. Use reasonable judgment in terms of washing your hands and in terms of social distancing, and the Lord will bless you real good. I want to also acknowledge on today those who contribute to the 365 campaign, uh, $1 a day for 365 days, First Lady Tanya Elegant, Mother Annie Wilcox, and Sister Levita Johnson. Let me also acknowledge those who contribute to the 500 air, those who gave $500 or more to the building fund, uh, trustee Tabitha Elligan, also member Deva Elligan, as well as trustee Laurel Knowles. Thank you so much for your giving. And then the thousand heirs. Let me acknowledge Sister Linda Smith, Deaconess Carrie Jackson, uh, Sister Cortless Adam, along with Sister Pat Whaley, trustee, along with trustee Brother Willie Smith, and then yours truly, Pastor Elegan. Thank you all so much for remembering how God uh, blesses those who are faithful in their giving. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Now, I have so much to share with you on today in terms of such an awesome word to share with you that we're excited about. And so here's our order. Let me pray with you. Then we have our praise and worship. And then we're coming back to share a word from the Lord today. Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we invite you in our presence today. We ask that you would move in a mighty way, meet people where they are, and lift them up to higher grounds. God, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, and we thank you for being a God of not just a second chance, but another chance and another chance. We pray for our nation as a whole, those who have been dramatically impacted as a result of this uh, coronavirus. I pray, God, that you continue to touch and heal and comfort those who have lost loved ones. I pray for the body of Christ in particular, that you would continue to strengthen. I pray that you continue to meet every need. I pray that you would lift up every bow down head and encourage the disencouraged. I pray for God, those that are lost, that somehow, some way, you would open windows and doors, that God, they may come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior on today. I pray your blessing as we go forth in the things that you call us to do as a church. Those who are sick, I pray for healing in their body and that you would lift them up and raise them in the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory and honor and praise in advance for the great and marvelous day that you will do. And we uh, cannot help but give you thanks and give you praise in the mighty master's marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I want to share with you that I'm excited about this season. It is March. March is known as March Madness in terms of the collegiate basketball. And I'm always excited about all sports and basketball in particular. And this uh, that leads to the bracketeering, the 64 teams that will shoot for the championship of the NCAA. And so we're going to share with you a message today that hopefully will bless your heart. So join me right after praise and worship with a word from the Lord. God bless you, True Lighters. God bless you, True Light Nation.
Greetings, True Lighter. Are you ready for the word? Our lesson for learning today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, and in particular, verse number 11. Many of you know it by heart, but the NIV says, For I know the plans I have for you, declareth the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you hope and a future. Thank God for the reading and the hearing and the doers of his word. For the sake of the subject and the benefit of brevity, I'd like to tag this particular text with the topic and title for today, What's the Game Plan? What's the Game Plan? Pray with me, Lord, send your anointing and overshadow your servant, your son. Speak to and through that these, your people, may hear a relevant, a rhema, a right now word from you. Convict, convince, charge, and challenge. But change us, dear God, our Father, and draw us closer, nearer our God to thee. Thank you for the power and privilege to preach and to carry your good news gospel. I pray, God, that self would decrease and Jesus would increase, and that people would see and hear the voice that only would come from you. Speak now, I pray, in the mighty master, this marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What's the game plan? Brothers and sisters, many of us work daily at planning or developing a game plan. Whether we achieve it or not, we have a game plan for success. Daily, we have a things to do list. Weekly, we schedule our appointments. And monthly, we have a calendar of events. And even some of us have the audacity to have what is called a one to three year vision plan. But a game plan ultimately is a sign of diligence. It's a sign of dutifulness. It's a sign of deliberate intention to accomplish a particular task. It is a premeditation method. It is a systematic strategy. And we all understand the importance of a game plan to be successful. When it comes to our jobs and career, we have a game plan. We have a game plan in terms of raising our children, hopefully to be successful citizens of this society. We have a game plan and ultimately desiring to purchase and buy a home. We have a game plan for savings in terms of a nest egg that we would have for retirement. That we grasp the theory of failure to plan in essence is really planning to fail. The philosophy that I have is called the five P's. It simply means proper preparation prevents poor performance. The Bible even tell us in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse nine, the heart of man make his plans his ways, but the Lord establish his steps. In other words, only God can make us able to live the plan that we have decided. I wanna share with you in particular today that I love watching what I used to participate in, in that of sports. I love watching football, baseball, and in particular, basketball. And in this particular month, which is March, it is something called March Madness, especially at the collegiate level. College basketball team play the season to reach ultimately the NCAA tournament, which is a bracket of 64, 32 teams on one side, 32 teams on the other side, going through a process of elimination to ultimately end up in the final four and the championship game and the winner. I enjoy the game. I enjoy the excitement. I enjoy the entertainment of the game. But what I really, really love is the strategy of the team trying to win. It's like chess. Every move is an advanced setup move for the next move to ultimately win the game. No particular move is an isolated move, but is a series of moves that ultimately determines the outcome. The coaches plan for weeks, if not months, on a strategy. They practice in an attempt to ultimately become perfect in terms of carrying out the operation, which is to win the game. Their mission 
is very simply to win every game. Their target is very simple, which is to become the champion. Somewhere between their mission and their target is the strategy. Somewhere between their mission and their target is the how-to. How are we going to bring to life our mission that will ultimately cause us to hit the bullseye of our strategy, which is the bullseye of our target, which is ultimately to win the NCAA championship. That, that, that is contingent on two things. One, it is contingent on agility, and second, it is contingent on momentum. Agility has to do with the ability to change in a given situation. In the midst of the game, there might be a time in which the momentum is going your way, and then it may be a time in which the momentum is going against you. But agility has to do with the ability to change in a situation. Do you stay with your strategy or do you ultimately change? That's the purpose of timeout. That's the purpose of halftime. That's the purpose of gathering so that you would know, do you have the agility or do you have the ability to change so that you can sway the momentum in your favor? Ultimately, what I want to talk about today is what's your game plan or what's your strategy for living a Christian victorious life and in particular eternal life. In other words, I don't want you to mistaken enjoying this life and then miss heaven. But neither do I want you so focused on heaven and you do not enjoy this life. I want to share with you in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21, it says, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. In other words, it says that we have many brainstorms options. We have many plans, but it is the Lord's purpose as to whether or not our plan will prevail. So ultimately what I'm saying is that the game plan for a victorious Christian life and eternal life really starts with having the right person as the head of your team. Yes, it has to start with the right person being on your side. And that right person is the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was young and we would play basketball and things would get difficult, then normally the person that perhaps was the best on the team would pull everybody together and say, we ought to do this and we ought to do that. And their strategy normally was centered around them because they were the best player. And not only were they the best player, but they really wanted to be the hero. They wanted to be the superstar. You and I, as we walk through life, as we journey through the path of righteousness, trying to live a victorious Christian life and ultimately have an eternal life, we better make sure that the person that is calling the plays in our life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in and everybody else may have a selfish motive. They may have a desire that the spotlight reflect on them and they be the hero. But how many know that when the Lord is on your side, not only are you and I conquerors, but we are more than conquerors. And that if God be for us, who can be against us? That we are laborers and co-laborers together with Jesus Christ. In fact, I don't want really, really nobody to be the head of my life but the Lord because I understand that the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life, eternal life, but that you may also have this life more abundantly. I want somebody that will look out for the whole team and me in particular to make sure that I'm blessed. He also tells us that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he will add all these things unto him. So if we look to Jesus, if we let our light shine, but give him the glory, give him the honor, give him the praise. If we look to Jesus, he said, I bring all things together so that at the end, we can stand with victory. At the end, we can ultimately be successful. So our text simply says, the Lord says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declared the Lord plan to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you 
an expected hope and as well as a future. Now, I want you to rightfully understand this particular text so that you can understand the strategy or the game plan in order not to give up in the middle of the game. I want you to know that you are next in line for a blessing. You are next in line for a miracle. You are next in line for a breakthrough. You are next in line for healing. You are next in line for deliverance. You are next in line for overcoming. You are next in line to be what God has ultimately divined and designed for you to be. I don't want you to give up before the game is over. I don't want you to be persuaded or swayed any other direction before you finally get to where God will have you to be. Let's look at this particular text in particular and determine what's the game plan, what's the strategy, how do we ultimately follow our mission so that we can ultimately hit our target. How is it that we can live this life abundantly as well as have eternal life? Pastor, what is the game plan? The background of the text says that the children of Israel were in exile for their disobedience to God. They were in Babylon and they were listening as a result to the false prophet named Hananiah, who was saying that they would be freed or delivered in two years. And that was their ultimate desire, that they had disobeyed God and they wanted to come out immediately. And some of us are that way in life. It's like a game of basketball. When we get behind, we want to catch up immediately. We want to stay ahead. Well, in life, we are that away. When we're disobedient, we fall down. But we want God to wipe out what we've been doing for years. And I'm sharing with you that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As high above the heaven is above the earth, so are God's ways above our way. So therefore, we got to understand that we have to let God be God and we follow him. And so then God said, I have a plan for you. And then the prophet Jeremiah, he confronted the prophet Jeremiah. He called out the false prophet. And that's what we do. We teach the truth by calling out that which is not true. And he confronted, he called out the false prophet and said, God has a game plan, but it's a game plan of hope and Future. In other words, you may not get what you want right away, but ultimately, in the end, God will make sure that you win. And sometimes life is that way. We have ups, we have downs. The songwriter said, all of my good days outweigh my bad days, but I won't complain. In other words, he says, I may have had more bad days than I've had good days, but the value and the significance of my good days, when you measure them, when you weigh them, it definitely outweighs my bad days. And so the text shares with us in terms of the strategy that he was giving the children of Israel in terms of the game of life. What's the strategy? First, he tells them to just stay prayerful. Stay prayerful. He tells them that in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12. He said, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. He said, after you've gone through some things, he says, then you will call on me. Some of us do not pray until we have a problem. In fact, problems lead us to prayer. But what I'm so glad is that God is a problem solving God and that he will always have attentive an attentive ear to our humble cry. That's why the songwriter said, while on others thou art calling savior, do not pass me by. And so here's the effort in the midst of when you are and I are, am, when you are and I am behind in the game of life, we are since panicking. What he's saying is just stay prayerful. When everything that can go wrong has gone wrong, ultimately he's saying, stay prayerful. I know that you want to come out of your current condition, but I want to share with you that your current condition is not your permanent position. You ought to be shout right by now. That, that ought to make you shout right now. In the midst of it all, it ought to cause you to humble yourself and pray because it's the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Man ought always to pray and not to faint. 
do I have a witness here? Here's the second, here's the second strategy. He says, not only to stay prayerful, but he said, stay present and be a participant. It's like telling the, the team player, stay present, stay here at the game. Amen. And then participate also. Why? Because many times when you're in the game and you're losing, you tend to drift off. And you don't want to participate when you're losing. Everybody wants to participate when things are going well. Everybody wants to participate when the house is full. But what about when things are not going well? What about when you do not have much money or things are not going in terms of on the up and up in your life? He says, I need for you to stay present in the game. And then I need for you to stay a point of participating. Look at Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. He said, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. The idea of seeking God with the whole heart is not just when things are going well, but in particular, when things are not going well. You and I are in the game of life, and there are times in which the score points to us being ahead, but then there are other times in which we are in the game of life, and the score points to that we are behind. But he says, I want you to stay faithful. I want you to stay dedicated. I want you to be determined. I want you to continue to seek me, not when the sun only is shining, but seek me on the rainy day, for I am God and I change not. And when you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. In other words, he says, stay in the game, participate in the game. There are times when the players are in the game and they're losing, then they stop playing. When they don't get the ball, they'll stop playing. And God has said, even when things are not going your way, and even when things are not going my way, the strategy is to stay present. The strategy is to continue to participate. The strategy is to continue to move forward. Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind me and I reach forth to those things which are before me. He says, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, Jeremiah. Jeremiah is giving them the game plan. And in the game plan, he ultimately is speaking to them that they may remain faithful while they are in exile. They would remain faithful while they are in a situation that is not favorable. He says, stay praying for. He says, stay present and stay to the point where you're participating. But thirdly, he says, stay patient, productive, and prosperous in your current condition. My goodness, I would imagine that whenever we're going through what we're asking God is deliverance and God do it right now. And God says, you didn't listen to me or you wouldn't be in the situation. In fact, you didn't get in the situation overnight, so I may not deliver you overnight. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to stay patient in your patience, remain productive in your production, become prosperous. He says, while you are there in Babylon, while you are in exile, he says, here's what I want you to do. In Jeremiah 29 and verse four through seven, he sets up verse 11 by saying in verse four through seven, he says, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says to all those that are carried away in exile, from Jerusalem to Babylon. He says, while you are there in the midst of suffering, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of discrimination, in the midst of injustice, in the midst of things not being fair, he said, build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. He says, increase in numbers there. Do not decrease. He says, also seek peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prosper, you will prosper also. In other words, he said, even while you are in the game of life and things are not going well, he said, continue to hold your hand to the plow. Continue to march forward to victory. He said, be steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you know your labor is not in vain. He said, ultimately, I brought you too far to leave you where you are. I know that you're in an unfavorable condition. I know your current condition, but it is not your permanent position. So therefore, he says to them, here's the strategy. While you are behind in the game, stay prayerful. Here's the strategy. While you are behind in the game, stay present and participate. Here is the strategy. While you are behind in the game, stay patient, remain productive, and you will ultimately prosper. Here's why. He says in verse 11, he would give them the promise to bring them home. In other words, he says, I will, in a matter of time, bring you home by giving you the victory. Now, now the time frame that they had was 70 years. They were to stay there 70 years. But while they were there, they were to be productive. Here's what he said. No matter what point are you in the game of life, whether you're in the first quarter, second quarter, halftime, third quarter, or fourth quarter, he said, when the game ends, you're going to win. It is so important to stay in the game. It is so important to continue to participate while in the game because God has a way of divinely intervening and turning things around into your favor. Here's what the text says in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. He says, I will give them hope and future. Here's what he ultimately says. I will give it to them because it's a promise that is not based on merit, but it's based on mercy. Lord, help me somebody in here. He says, I'm going to do what I promise I will do, which is ultimately bless you in the land of Abraham, lead you to the promised land where I ultimately have decreed and declared is yours. I'm going to make sure that you remain there. But while you are exiled, I need you to understand that I want you to remain faithful over a few things because ultimately, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. In other words, the hymn writer and the songwriter decree and declare, I may not come when you want him, but he is always on a time. Do I have a witness here? And so he says, he says, I'm going to give you hope while you're in a hopeless situation. I'm going to give you a future when it seems like you're at the deadline. And I'm going to give it to you based upon not the fact that you deserve it. That's merit. But I'm going to give it to you based on I am a merciful God. Can I tell you that my coach told me when I was young. He says, he says, if the best team play their worst and the worst team play their best, then the worst team will win every time. I don't know where you are in life. I don't know how many mistakes you made. I don't know how you have had to ultimately reach the level that you are. But I want to share with you that if you continue to do the best that you can, God will show up and God will show out. So let me forward, let me, let me fast forward the text to the day so that I want you to understand the game plan for victorious living today and eternal life is real quick. Here's my three point and I'm finished. Amen. Here's my three point and I'm finished. Let me fast forward to 2021. Here's number one. Forget the past. Hmm. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter what happened in the game yesterday. It really doesn't matter what happened in the game in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Now you're at the point of victory and you need to forget the past. The Bible said lay aside every sin and the weight that do it so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I want to share with you that there are many times that we cannot finish the game in victory and enjoy this life and have eternal life because we're still holding on to the past. We're still holding on to the unhealed hurts, the unresolved issues, the unmet needs, and the unanswered questions. Here's three things I want to share with you in order to forget the past. Number one, let it go. Number two, learn from it. And then number three, look ahead for better days are coming. I know that seem like the past keep coming up in your mind, but if you continue to look forward, better days are coming, it will ultimately wipe out what is in your past. If God meant for you to live in your past, he'd have left you in your past, but he brought you out of your past into your future because your future is greater than your past. 
You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. You are a winner. You have a new attitude. So I stopped by to share with you this morning the strategy in 2021, the game plan, the how to get from mission to target to live a victorious life and have eternal life is number one, forget the past. Number two, have faith in the present. Have faith in the present. In other words, minimize your mistake. Now, it's one thing to make a mistake. It's another thing to keep on making the same mistake. Hmm. Einstein said that if we continue to do the same thing, expecting a different result, it's other words defined as insanity. So I want you to understand that we all make mistakes, but minimize your mistake. Here's number two, master the moment. When you have a place and time in your life, learn to master it. Learn to take advantage of the moments that you have so that you can ultimately say that you live life to the fullest. And then number three, maximize momentum. When things are going your way, don't you sit down. When things are going on the up and up, don't you take a break. While things are rolling, keep them rolling. While things are moving, keep them moving. While things are excelling, keep them excelling. Have faith in your present because the Bible said now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, forsaken all, I trust him. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, means forsaken all, I trust Thank him. I want you to know that while you're in the present, you may be up. Then again, you may be down. But if you have faith in God that he brought you to it, also have faith that he will bring you through it. And I want to share with you today, there's a blessing on the other side of through. If you hold on and hold out, your help is on the way. Do I have a witness in here today? I don't care what game it is. The game strategy is that God said, I know the plan that I have for you. Plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope in a future. Somebody ought to shout amen. Can I rest in my seat in the closing thought? Can I take my seat on this Sunday morning? But let me not end without telling you to fight till you finish. I want you to know the game is not over until your tongue is glued to the top of your mouth. The game is not over till your eyes are shut and won't open no more. The game is not over till your heart stops beating and life has ended. But until now and then, I want you to fight until you finish. Do I have a witness? Endure until the end. Paul tells his son, Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier. He says, amen. He that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. Paul said, he which begun a good work in me, I'm confident that he will finish. Hold on, hold on. Your help is on the way. You fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You finished your course. I want you to know that God will honor your faithfulness. God will honor you standing in the game. What's the strategy? Fight till you finish. I want you to know that Jesus fought till it was over. Can I tell you that he fought till it was over? He said in the word, he, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame, sat down at the right hand throne of God. What I'm saying is that he was hung up for our hangups, stretched out for you and I struck out. He held on to the point where he said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. Dropped his head in the lock of his shoulder. He died. He died, but he didn't stay dead. But that early, good God Almighty, early Sunday morning, can I tell somebody that the game is not over as long as you believe in the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ is able to pick you up just like he got up on Sunday morning. Turn your life around and place your feet on solid ground. Hold on. Hang in there. Try it. He will do it. Shout yes. Can I get you to hold to God's unchanging hand? 
There'll be momentum swing. Things sometimes will go your way and other times will not go your way. But hold to God's unchanging hand. of wisdom. What a mighty word from God. What a powerful opportunity to hear God's word and allow God's word to penetrate our minds and heart and make a difference in our life. What's your game plan? I know God's game plan for you is that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. We never like to end our broadcast without extending an invitation for you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you a sinner repenting of my sins. Forgive me and give me another chance. I confess that Jesus is the Christ. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I might be resurrected unto a brand new life. Now come into my heart and take over my life. You said if I do this, I would be saved. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible said that heaven is rejoicing when one sinner repent. And certainly true lighters, we can rejoice with true light nation as many we believe by faith have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. I want to encourage you though. I want to encourage you to get in a Bible believing, Bible teaching church so that you can grow spiritually and you can live a victorious Christian life. And certainly, I would love to be your pastor and members of True Light. would love to be your brothers and sisters in the Lord. If you're in this Atlanta metropolitan area, send me an email, pastor at thetruelightbaptist.org, and I will certainly respond. But if you're in this region, yea, these United States of America, certainly I can make a recommendation. But I want you to get in the Word and allow the Word to get in you so that you can grow and live a victorious Christian life. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again and being with you in worship. God bless you, True Lighters. God bless you, True Light Nation. Amen. God bless you, True Lighters. God bless you, True Light Nation. I don't know about you, but I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. We're at the end of our broadcast on today, but I want you to know that I've been so delighted to have your presence and your participation, your patience, and your prayers in our ministry on today. I want you to know that time has changed 
and we are expecting a long day, but I want you to remain safe as well as sound. Remember to practice the guidelines of CDC as you engage uh, into society and into the things that are going on today. Please be safe and please remain sound in terms of making good decisions. If you enjoyed our broadcast on today, I would that you hit the like button. Secondly, share it with a co-worker, a neighbor, and a friend. And then thirdly, subscribe to someone else. I thank you so much for all that you do for True Light. I want you to know that if no one has told you, let me be the first to tell you that God loves you and so do your pastor. I pray for you each and every day. I want to give a special thanks for those who work with me behind the scene to cause our services to be a success. I want to say special thanks to our music staff. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Our prayer warriors, our prayer intercessors that pray for us Sunday in and Sunday out. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. My executive producer that does a stellar job behind the scene to make sure that we operate in excellence. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And I don't know about you, but I'm into basketball, especially this season. It is March Madness. So I got to run on and see what the end is going to be. I got a game strategy for life, but I want to watch them and their game strategy. I want to see the best team and the worst team and whoever has the best strategy will ultimately win. Let me speak a word into your life and then we're going to sing. I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. As a pastor, prophet, preacher, chosen for this present generation, I speak into the lives of your people, dear God, our Father, prosperity, provision, power, peace, protection, and all of your promises, henceforth, now, and forevermore, that we will rise up and be the head and not the tail. Lenders, not barriers, that we will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going out, blessed coming in, blessed to be a blessing to others. In the mighty master, this marvelous name of Jesus Christ, lift your hand and say, I receive in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, true lighters. God bless you, true light nation. Run on!